Hey, my name is Zev. I go by at Zebulus on TikTok. I am a junior at Georgetown University studying international politics and security with minors in Russian and mathematics. I'm currently calling you from, uh, from DC at Georgetown. Right. So do you have aspirations to be in politics? Uh, it is my opinion that anyone who has aspirations to be in politics should not be in politics. You want to know something? You're the second person <laughs> I've interviewed that's in school for law that says that. That's really I, awesome. I, there are a ton of people at Georgetown who are very into the idea of becoming president one day. I am not one of them. I think being a senator, a representative, it's just too much stress and too much shaking hands and not enough doing something good for the world, if that makes well, sense. I think what your generation is seeing is that very blatantly true as we see how our politics have unfolded over the past, not even just four years. I would say, you know, I mean, for me, since I got out of high school, but, but since <laughs> I think, you know, when we saw the pushback against Obama, I think is when people really started becoming aware of the politics. The weird dichotomy for things is that because our culture became so aspirational that it kind of took the eye off the ball of looking at how politics is working because everyone was so busy trying to go and be and become and get and grab, you know, status and money and drive and you know, celebrity <laughs> and all that, you know, social media, you know, I always called it social media climbers, you know what I mean? Oh, like, that's good. So, um, but I think this has been an awesome opportunity for the next generation, which is you, to really see the underbelly and to see how that should not be the case. So bravo for that answer. No, of course, I think my generation's goal is to make the world a better place and using our specific talents, our platforms to do so. And especially for people interested in uh, social action and social justice, what's more important is having an outcome, not necessarily the power that comes with like, oh, being a senator at 35, like, no, do something instead. Right, right. Uh, I got involved a lot in uh, political TikTok on the day of the insurrection on January 6th. Get out of here. I, I was in DC. I was watching a lot of it go down from my window. Wow. And I said, I study this stuff. If people are going to get their information about what's going on and understanding why everything matters, I am not biased. I'm just here to report the facts. Uh, I understand something called doom scrolling, which is like just constantly looking through your phone, constantly looking at negative information and feeling like you're trapped in this void of blackness. And it's terrifying, but I also study it. I understand what works. I know how to keep people safe. So I started making TikToks with that goal in mind. You are one of my inspirations for getting news out there because I've been trying to do more news content, but you are so fast with it. I've started checking your page just to see if you've done it. Like I know people who have had huge following and then all of a sudden they get shadow banned. I hate that expression. I, I don't believe it's real. Yeah, and so and then they're like, well, I'm going to stop and I'm going to YouTube. And Here's the thing, even if you have 10 people that really are solidly supporting you, you have a responsibility to those 10 people. So leaving the platform or you're not having fun anymore, then you have to figure out how to have fun because as long as this is not like lame, like Facebook with advertisers <laughs> scrolling along either side of our faces, which is so gonna happen, you know what I mean? Yes. As long as this is what we have and it's in, a, in its infancy stage for the next, let's say year, hopefully this will be just what it is until the election. Because if this That's doesn't what I'm become for. tragic and we can stay on message and stay together. I got my first video attacked by Trumpers yesterday. 
where they just came after me in the comments, but they weren't clever insults. Like I got called numb nuts unironically. Like I got called Poindexter, which I saw as a compliment, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you only had one? Congratulations. Uh, that, that's been the big one, because that was when I said like, oh, there's this report that Trump's campaign helped finance the people and the companies that were helping the insurrection. It's true, though. So, you know. Yes. So, I mean, I use my, my ammo is the minute I see something remotely derogatory, I just block and delete, you know. Yeah, that's what I've started to do. Yeah, I just don't want to be on that algorithm. Like I like when I hear people okay. like, get me off Trump, blah blah. I actually think that they're just looking for more followers. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I think to some extent, yes. I received a book deal last year to write a book on how comedy impacts international relations. Right, right. I was looking again. And it's the same thing when it comes to comedy. Like when it like it's the same with music where you don't need anything except yourself for a joke or for music. Mm -hmm. So people in vulnerable populations or who feel like they're down and out, like music and comedy is what kind of really helps them get out of that. And right. I study in particular how comedy is used against oppressive governments. Cool. Yeah. I think they use it in France a lot, right? Yes. The French have that shit down. <laughs> it is a beauty to watch. Just because what can governments do? They can't, like, if a government silences a comedian or uh, in our case, like a TikToker, if, that, if it ever comes to that point, mm -hmm. that's hilarious. Right. Did you know that the guy, it, it's I, Iceland, the president of Iceland was once a stand-up comic. He became, it, I don't know if you studied if that's part of the curriculum. Yeah. When, the, when their economy tanked, they created like a five person, they didn't have one person be the president, it was like five people. And my friend's husband was one of them. And they had like this like consort like a mini consortium of people who decided to run Iceland and Reykjavik specifically. And uh, and the one of the guys was a stand-up comic because yeah, John Narr. Him, and then he <laughs> ended up being president. You know what I mean? It's so random. I mean yeah, I mean a comedian, really. I mean yeah. gross. He's a gross one, but he's a comedian. Agreed. And I, he's just a former social media personality to me at this point. Like, I don't think he's going to sustain till 2024. You don't think so? No, no. I think the rose isn't off the bloom, right? Fair. I think he's still wasping, waft, you know, the waft of the stink of the yes. food <laughs> all around him. And I think that once the court cases start happening and it's yeah. the whole drip, 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 it's the Chinese water torture of legal problems. <laughs> the, what will ultimately shift from, oh, I'm afraid of him to tweet vomit, vomit, to a oh, bad nut neck. That's what I yeah. mean. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I could be proven wrong, but my <laughs> instinct tells me that I just think it's the same thing with the Tea Party. They kind of went by yeah. the side. You know, everyone was totally freaked out by them. It's really the same crowd, just with a different outfit or just not even a different outfit. They just don't have tea bags hanging from them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that ilk will always be part of our culture. And it's ultimately the ilk that came to America, like a bunch of Puritans. You know what I mean? They're yeah, just absolutely. lame, weird, <laughs> Christian-y, insane, 
They were so insane that they had to find a new land to live on. <laughs> they were so insane, nobody could listen to them anymore. <laughs> and now we have a whole country of it. Uh, it's in, it is insane, ridiculous. And I look forward to my children having to study it in school. <laughs> well, I just hope that the lobotomy farms that I'm hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> right oh there's absolutely no coming, there's no coming back from that agree you come back from that How you do don't you, you adapt but they're not going to adapt they're crazy they're gone they have crossed the great beyond and yes you know it's not like they can and plus they're not like they're, they're not going to sit and talk to a therapist like, what went wrong with my mother? And no, that's not going to happen. But my, oh, go for it. No, no, go ahead. My high school, one of my high school teachers, one of the most influential teachers in my life, had the theory of the 2060 20, where 20 people are always going to agree with you, 20 people are always going to disagree with you, but it's about convincing that other 60%. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can. If we can convince people who aren't in that 20% and we go after pe people who voted for Trump because of the economics, like they voted for Trump because uh, he's not Hillary, voted for Trump because uh, Joe Biden's son. Like, I, th I think there's a way to quell that. Well, I think that's already kind of starting a little too. Yes. But I think that... You know, it's going to be interesting to see because I I think that the independent party is going to become stronger this time around. Agreed. Which might not be great on some level for either party, you know. Um, I think eight and 12 years from now, the independent party could be something really great. I think if people, like somebody like that, he used to be a congressman, this guy Jolly, I forget his first name, but I think he was either... Oh. Florida or from yeah Ohio, some one of those two states he but he, he's an interesting guy he's like a never trumper he's always on the chat shows and, and <laughs> that that he wants to run he's thinking of running as an independent because he can do that fine line between the two and is not like crazy you know but you know who knows we'll see the green you know things like the green party these are the things that always ruin things so We'll see. Yep. I think, we, I think the two, 2024 is so important, but I think 2022 is even more important. I think we have the Senate right now by a thread. And the fact that like Joe Manchin can just say, no, I don't want to do this. And he is dictating Democratic Party politics. Like we got to get to 53 minimum. And I think we can. Yeah. Well, that's what we're going to be hopefully helpful in doing, at least pushing, Absolutely. pushing the pushing the the narrative that you know these four states are doable. Let's focus, you know. Yes. And then you know that's you know again. I'd like to think that I'm right about what we're doing. <laughs> I'd like to think there's some gem of truth to this whole concept. Have a great night. Great weekend. You too. Bye-bye.